NCRP Productions presents Catalyst Game Labs, Shadowrun, 6th Edition, Season 3, Episode 3. Hello everybody and welcome to Sunday in the Shadows. Today we're playing Shadowrun 6th Edition and my name is David, I'm going to be your Game Master and you all, the hard pain fans, get to listen to a bunch of friends sit around the table and adventure in the 6th world. So we're going to start by going around the table and introducing our players and their prospective characters. We're starting with our very own Josh. Hello, everybody. This is Josh. I'm playing Nomad, the Elven Covert Ops Specialist. Hey, it's Barry. I'm running MF, the Dwarven... Oh my god, I forgot. Adept. 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 <laughs> Dwarven Adept. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, everybody. It's Pedro. I am playing Hot Hands, the Hermetic Mage. Hi, it's Sequoia, and I'm running Jelly, the face of the group. All right, well, welcome back. So, last week where we left off, you all had traveled to New Orleans, down into the French Quarter, to follow up on a lead to try and cure MF of his ghoul affliction, or his infection that was slowly turning him into a ghoul-like state. You guys had, through uh, leverage of your contacts and some investigating, you guys landed in... Louisiana, where there was a, a blackout, navigated yourselves away from the airport, and was able to finally get yourselves to the location of the voodoo priestess known as Big Mama Dip. And at Big Mama Dip's house, you guys uh, parlayed with her two nephews, and have now since uh, kind of moved towards the back of the house, where MF has wandered down into the yard, where Big Mama Dip and the rest of the group are standing on the back porch, and watching MF uh, attempt to engage with what looks to be some type of awakened rooster. And he is attempting to catch it. Big Bomba Dip has instructed him to catch one of them roosters so that we can start the ritual. That's right. right. And so that's where we pick up. And we're going to immediately go into initiative between MF and this chicken. Chicken. Who I've coined the, the Loa Cluck. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. So, MF, go ahead and roll initiative, as will I. And it's been long enough since I've done initiative. Initiative is... Um, there we go. You have a, this yeah, is you a pretty have a, fast, Plus actually. a D6. Oh, you eight, have an initiative eight, number. Eight. These things are fast. And then the initiative total plus so You the should sixes. have a number of... I believe you've got several D6 plus your initiative yeah, mod, like plus I your have initiative plus number. plus one D6. You have something like a, a number plus probably three D6 or something like that. Right. Your initiative score should be your intuition plus your reaction plus 1d6. And you, because of your there adaptability... There it is. Okay. okay. Got it? All right. <clears throat> Been too long. And the plus 3d6 is the... We're rolling for sixes, right? Fives and sixes? No, no. You're just rolling. You're just adding the numbers up together. Okay. So I have 11 plus 3d6. Okay, so three. So whatever you rolled on the three d six total plus eleven is your initiative. Number. Oh, the actual number. Yes, twenty one. Twenty one. Man, it's been too long. What is your agility? What is your reaction? My re base reaction is or modified reaction. Whatever your you know in you know active reaction. Is. So that wouldn't include any. I kind feel of like I've never looked at the character sheet before. There we go. Reaction <laughs> is five. Okay, so you are first. All, All right. So so I'm gonna, gonna try and catch the chicken. You're gonna try and catch the chicken. All right. So you're going to make a. Um, Close combat attack, and I'm going to try and defend. Did we all come in? Did we? Yeah, we all came in. At the yeah, you guys are watching. I just want to make sure that I record this with my cyber guy. Okay. Like, and you I guys are watching sure this. Big Bomb Dip, catching Big chicken. Bomb Dip yeah. has instructed you to not interfere, because this is the test that MF needs to face yeah. alone. Well, I'm not going to interfere. I just want to make sure it's documented. It will bring YouTube. him into communion with, with the Loa. I just kind of find a seat and sit down, take my hat off, put it on my knee, and just, just watch. So just for logistics purposes, I can't remember, do I specifically know, have I tested myself to believe that I am infected with the HMVV strain, or are we just going off the fact that I have all the symptoms, but they seem to be coming on slowly? Um, you have the symptoms, you have not actually tested yourself. Yeah. So. That's this. This is what happens when <laughs> you go from run to run and don't think in the biotech sphere, right? And this comes to me as I'm trying to catch a fucking chicken <laughs> in the swamp, <laughs> in the swamp, in the bayou. <laughs> All right, so it's and that is an unnatural looking chicken. Scary <laughs> chicken. <laughs> I think I'm still holding the pickled eggs. <laughs> That's right. 
It's like a comfort at this point. Ooh, Peter just made pickled eggs, and they were disgusting. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> so, I'm going to roll my reaction plus intuition. So this is an opposed roll, all right? Okay. That's So your full action is to dodge? Is that? No, I'm not going to dodge. I was going to dodge, which would allow me to add my athletics to in a dice pool to my roll, but I'm not going to use it because I'm going to take up one of my actions for the round. So That's does this cost point. you anything to no, do? No, this is just a defense test. So. Gotcha. All right. So this is just my reaction plus intuition. My, my basic ability to dodge what you're trying okay. to do. So I have three. I have four. Okay, you have four. All right, so you succeed. <clears throat> All right, so you grab a hold of this thing. Yep. Now I need to make an, a willpower plus intuition test. Okay. I have two. You have two. All right. So for the rest of you outside of this, you know, uh, engagement between MF and this rooster, you guys are watching, and you see him fairly quickly run over and pick up this rooster, catch it pretty quickly. But he then kind of, kind of starts to waver and almost like... And you see the look in his eye. His eyes kind of roll into the back of his head. Can I flick on my googly eyes, please? <laughs> sure. So there is an active magical signature between the rooster and MF currently. Now, you know that MF is, is awakened. He's an adept, yeah. right? But there is a, a visible link between the two of them. If it, who, is anybody near me? Yeah, I think we're all Everyone's kind of standing on the back porch. Shot. Big Mama Dip's like, you know, she's like looking down, mm-hmm. Right? Uh, and kind of, you know, in a big rocking chair. You I'll, know? I'll take out a can of, like, chew, and I'll go over to Big Mama Dip and offer some to her. Would you like, uh, ma'am, would you care for some? She says, what is it? Uh, it's some chew and tobacco. It's from, uh, well, I grew up myself. Completely now, organic. <laughs> never touch the stuff. Tried it once when I was a young girl, and it made me sick. No but problem. I appreciate it. Do you mind if I partake myself? Not at all. Right. Not at all. Just spit there in the car. Oh, can, can do, oh. ma'am. I'll, I'll be nice and polite, like. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I'll, I'll go sit back down okay. over with these guys. You guys are kind of grouted onto this back, small back, mm -hmm. you know, porch. The wood is kind of warped and the paint's kind of chipped off. You know, you're looking out in this dirt. You know, there's no grass. It's just dirt because the Brewsters have just destroyed <laughs> the backyard. Right, there's willow trees along the back fence line, you know, it's the, your typical, you know, southern backyard that this house probably been here a hundred years, right? Uh, it looks like Actually, MF. 200 years. Two, 200 years, yeah. <laughs> MF's commuting with that, they chicken. All right, so you know that something has changed, you know, you, you, you've made this connection. You're now, you kind of go into this trance where you're in a kind of a dark space. There's nondescript. It doesn't look like a room. You don't know what it is, but you see a shadow approaching you. And you see a figure start to take shape from the shadow, and it is—it looks very—it's—it's it's adorned in fetishes. It's got long hair, but its face, some of the bones along the cheeks and the, the nose. There's no nose; it's just the cavity where the nose, the cartilage would be, right? And the eyes glow yellow. And then he says, "Why have you summoned Zumwaldi?" I do not know. I, I was to catch chicken. You speak funny. Who's up? You speak funny. Who's <laughs> up? Well, if someone's a mall, he must pay a price, huh? What are you after? What's your needs? Make me a deal, yes? I was hoping to remove uh, infection, uh, black striations in arm, uh, sickness. Sick, I have sickness. Ah, sick dwarf, huh? He wants to be better, wants to feel better, hmm. Well, you be certain to make a deal with Zumwalli, and maybe Zumwalli make you happy. Right. So at this point, we're going to go and go into the next contested roll between you and the rooster. Oh, actually, it's my action now with the rooster. So to right. let you know, uh -huh. if it matters, uh -huh. I have four minors that can be converted to another major. I just don't know what I would do with it. But to let you know, if there is something I can do, I will take that extra major action. So what it is? So yeah, you can right. So what? It, what's your engagement now? Is kind of a contested will between you and the rooster, but. As you make it so, the way this is working is when you succeed in your role, in your opposed role, you're able to commune with the Loa. The rooster is the catalyst for that connection. Okay. Right? But if the rooster wins, he gets to act normally and make an attack against you. Okay. Right? So, uh, so I don't see a purpose in using those actions well, yet. There's more. So every time that you make an opposed role, you're lowering the force of the rooster. Once the rooster's force is reduced to zero, the connection to Zumwaldi was lost. So you've got a finite amount of time to make a deal with Zumwaldi, all the while trying to fend off the actions of this awakened rooster. 
Okay. But it has bridged the link between you and it so that you're not communing with, with the Loa. So then Spirit. with another major action, you I could make another do... contested roll. Let's make another contested roll. Okay. All right. I have four. I'm nothing if not consistent. Oh, hey, wait. Okay, I am going to spend... Actually, can I spend two chips from the middle? It can bring me up to four and, and uh, sure Ty goes to the attack while I'm asking the group how they feel. Yep. Go for it. Let's do it. So you're gonna, so you're gonna. I'm gonna raise two up to successes. I now have four successes, and I am the attacker. So Ty should go to me at zero. Ty does go to the aggressor. All right. So you stated, you know, you're afflicted with something. So back to the go between between you and the love. So what is you want? What did I give? Do you remove sickness? Hmm. Well, what's the question? Is it moldy, hey? Hmm. Yes, there is something I need. Me, me earn. Mjern was lost to the orcs in the bayou. Get it back, and Zimali fix you up real nice. Zimurn is, uh, he, he looks like how? How would I notice? Right? He kind of, you see that he kind of, his hands kind of make some gestures, and he kind of forms up this image of this small clay urn. It's, you know, about, you know, it's about the size of a small vase. Okay. He says, yeah. He's all, him Zimali needs it back. He's all, you and your friends have a chance. Brings it back and I fix you up real nice. And I must again catch chicken to to commune with you. Oh, it's all the mollies, the mollies. He uh, permeates his uh, his reach through many a creature. Chicken just one of them. So I get urn and bring to here. Big Mama Deb know what's to do. Okay, I, I, go I ahead and make urn. another roll. And this is again the the opposed role. Yep. As the this represents the struggle that's continuing to go on while gotcha. you're in with the Lord. Now I've got four again. I have two. Okay. So this time he wins, so he gets to make an attack. All right. He is going to use one of his abilities. One of his powers is called confusion. So you are going to make a willpower plus logic roll, and I oppose roll versus my magic plus willpower. So my willpower is four. My magic is. Okay, I have three. I have four. Okay, nothing happens. So then we go back to the beginning of the round. It's going to be the opposed roll at the beginning of the next round. I have one, two, I have four. I have four. Okay, Ty's going to go to you. So, Zimwaldi says, you goes here with your mates, right? And he, he creates this image of this bayou and this encampment. And it shows a picture of a large armor-vested orc with fetishes all over him in the middle of a swamp. And, and this orc, he, he has your urn. That's right. This, this, this one you show me. You seek I out get Spalding, his, Spalding's his name, to the south, across the river. Across the Great River. I get this for you. You You bring me fix. the urn and I some wally fix you up real nice. That's the deal. I, I will take deal. Then we have a deal. <laughs> all right, and he kind of fades out out of, you know, the, the, you know, kind of fades back and kind of floats back. Go ahead and make another opposed roll. I've got three. I have three as well. Okay. So now you you kind of gain your senses. You come back and, you know, you guys have been watching this for like, seemed like he was kind of struggling with this thing for, for a while, but like, but not in the struggle in the way that like the rooster's not clawing at him and things like that. It was something else was going on. Hot hands, you know that something's going on on the other side in the astral, right? But from where you guys are looking at from the from the meat world, it just looks like, you know, they're bonding. You know? Hold the chicken. Such a nice kitty, having, right? He's having himself. All right, so you've won initiative on this round. What are you going to do? Well, he stepped away. I I think I'm done. Well, you're not done yet. Right, right. But I think I'm done. So at this point, I don't. I'm not sure. Throw the chicken? Do I do I have awareness outside? Yes, yes. You've, you've come out of this, this thing. You're, 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 now you've got this rooster in your hands <laughs> that's struggling to get free. So I'm going to throw it. Sucker. You get rid of it. All right. You get rid of the chicken, all right? Mm -hmm. And it falls to the ground, all right? And kind of scurries off. <laughs> and Big Mama Dip leans forward and says, What did he say? He, he give me a uh, quest. He told me I bring uh, urn that was stolen from armored orc, and we have deal. He fix. Orcs I thank you. Orcs aren't taken too kindly around these parts. Not, not going to be too many orcs around here. Matter of fact, won't be any in the tin town. 
Don't like orcs around here. Don't like them big fellas like your friend there either. So I will uh, describe to her the picture you showed me of the area in the swamp. She says, oh, yeah. She says, come on inside, right? So she leads you guys back inside into the living room where you sit I make back sure down that, on the plastic covered couch. Yeah, at the porch. I'll make sure I don't have chicken shit on me. I'll rub nope. my feet and then step. Nope, nothing there, right? Dirt, dust. Yep. Right? And she leads right. you guys back inside, sits you down, all right? right? Calls for some iced tea, and she busts out a map, and she says, to the south here, in the bayou, to the southwest in the bayou, there's a there's an orc gang that, that runs out of the swamp, kind of kind of a swamp go gang, if you will, by one led by a, by a particularly you know, particularly nasty orc who goes by the name of Spalding. So I think that's the one that the Loa was talking to you about. He's about. the same name. Yes. If you made a deal with the Loa, you know you're bound to uh, complete that uh, request, or else you start to. Uh, not feeling too well. I do not feel well now. Once the bar so. has been made. Well, I can't say I ever been into a bayou, but I'm mighty excited to go and check out the new floor. Yeah. I, I have, uh, I have a question. The uh, the go gang in in Seattle is bikes. Here is boats, buggies, buggy swamp. We, we don't have LT. I have curiosity. Um, these these fellers are they uh, are they a menace locally? Yeah, they're active members in the slave trade. They deal with the Caribbeans, pirates. I'm gonna lean a little forward and say, Yeah, I don't take too kindly of that. So I gotta be a question for you. Though. Well, it might not. Be. Wait, actually, do we know? Is this is she a fixer? In would this be somebody I would think to ask for a job? No, she's probably she's probably a mage of some sort. Okay. Didn't okay. We have did we did we have a fixer that here? That was the other. I you guys had a fixer that, that got you into contact. The other guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then then Seattle. I'm not gonna ask, ask the question to her, but it gives me an idea. I'll talk to you guys about it in a minute. I'll say, well, if they've ever caused you problems uh, since we gotta go out there for yeah. our friends. It caused me no problems, but you know, I don't go out much. You know, no reason to. If I gotta go anywhere, I take the quick route. You know what I mean. Say, I, I do well. You know, maybe we'll have a talk with the boys, and maybe they won't. Then you'll stop bothering them. Well, I can, I can lend you my map. Uh, and might appreciate it. And uh, you know what? I can even let you borrow old Cedro. Old Cedro? What is this? Cedro, my swamp buddy. I'm gonna have a little bit of a smile. This is good. Say, I've always wanted to try this one. So, I, I forget the names of the nephews, right? I forget what I, what I called them. Who's got the names of the nephews? <laughs> right from last week to now. So much is going Nope, on. I didn't get them written down. Doesn't look like. Damn, They were. Let's see if I call their names. I didn't write them down. Anyone write down the names of. Who I rename them? Oh. One, uh, I think one of their names was Verdell. Sounds right. Yes, that sounds Verdell right. Verdell and, I'm going to say Cecil and Verdell. Yeah, Those were their names. So she said, Verdell, get the keys of Cedro. Bring them out of the garage. I want to show these nice people uh, what a real piece of uh, mechanical craftsmanship looks like. All right, so she says, uh, I'll have Verdell bring it around the side. Make it go easy on it. All right, she's my pride and joy. Say, so I'll treat it better than I've treated any vehicle in the last year and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure I know what that means, but I hope that is good. Sorry, right. it's good. It's a very big reference to something I've been through. All right. So, a few moments, you know, you know about five, ten minutes passes. Riddell comes in and says, yeah, she's ready. So, you guys, if you guys go outside, you'll see that there's a very old-looking swamp buggy, you know, that's got, you know, paint chips and it's got an old buckboard seat in it, you know, with a with a yoke, you know, you know, it's got an outboard, uh, you know, it's got a little trolling motor on it. It's got this big, huge, like, uh, ro rotor motor, rotor fan, you know, thing on the back of it. And says, yep, that's it right there. I, I like, withhold the, the joy in me and, like, ask for the keys. And, like, anybody who knows, you guys know me, Jelly, I'm, like, stupid with my own version of happy. Just going <laughs> over there and I sit down. Tell me how this, give me a rundown. So he's like, yeah, yeah. So 
This is your choke here, right? This is your throttle, right? This is how you steer. You move the rudder here, right? It's all uh, be careful. You know, things got a lot of got a lot of torque, right? So, depending on weight distribution of the, of the you know of the buggy, you know, it's gonna it's gonna kick up a little bit. So uh, you know, ease into the corners. Don't cut her too sharp, or you end up on shore where you don't want to be. Ease into the corners. So now uh, you going down in the bio. There's more. There are worse things down there than orcs. I, 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 you best be careful. And uh, no matter no matter what, don't don't stop off at any of the watering holes along the way. Caribs got that place marked left and right for the, for the slave trade. They're looking for people. There's people like you sell off some high bidder somewhere, never to be seen again. Oh, well that would be my big mistake for them to try. But don't underestimate them. I won't. I don't know the orcs are talking about. It's the pirates. I think. And I'll look back at our other crew. <laughs> I think we'll be all right. All right. Y'all got a rig to, to tow this thing? You need a way to get it there. Uh, does our van have a thingy? It's got a trailer hitch. Fabulous. Yeah, we got a trailer hitch. And you guys, were, you rented a GMC Bulldog, right? Yeah. All right, cool. yeah. All right you can tow with the Bulldog. So, yes, yeah, so I'll go and help. Back it up, up and hook yeah. it up to the trailer hitch. It's on a trailer. So, all right, there you go. All right. All right. We're moving. I'll tap the side of the van. So, as Vidal starts to walk, it was like, oh, hold on. He's, he reaches into his pocket. He's all here. You might need this. And right, he reaches out and hands you a uh, he hands you a, a slip of paper. It's basically it's, it's a hunting license. It says any of the uh, local water law come up on you, show them this. It might help you out. Any type pitch. Okay. I'm glad you pulled it up, put it in my pocket, put it in my wallet. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right, guys. We ready, Jelly? Uh, you probably put those that jar of pickles down. Ah, yes. Pickled hard boiled eggs. I'll hand them to Videl. Any more of these? That's all right. Thank you for your time. Christmas came early. All right. As he reaches in and grabs one, you know, the green juice dripping off his fingers and pops one in his mouth. He's all, you guys be careful, Videl. <laughs> Could I get one of those for the road, please? Pops one your way. There you go. Yeah, slap. Right. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, they just used the trench this yeah. trailer. And throw yeah, it throw it in your mouth, dude. Yeah. The vinegar kills anything bad. Tasty. All right, so you guys load up in the bulldog. Who's driving? Uh, probably me. Mm -hmm. I think. I think uh, Nomad was driving, wasn't Nomad it? Nomad driving. One of you had. Nomad one was. One of you were the only ones that had a piloting skill, and I think oh, it was Nomad. Do you it actually was. have piloting? I don't. I have storyline piloting in the sense that I probably have just driven well, cars. No, yeah, Nomad's not going to stop him from driving, but if we actually need to do anything testy, then you might actually, want Nomad behind the wheel. I'm just I'll, saying. I'll let you drive the car, and I'll tell you, I'm going to be driving the thing back there. Right. Yeah. And Nomad's going to be yeah. driving? Yeah. Okay, so Nomad's we'll driving the wheel. Bulldog, everyone else is riding. It is going to occur to you that as you guys start to load up into the Bulldog, you've got a map, but you don't exactly know where you're going. Right, or where we are. Easy enough on your comm links to find out where you're at, right? And you can see, you know, Big Mama pointed out where the bayou was, where the gang, you know, their territory is. But, you know, she probably has pointed to like a a 10 or 15 mile area, you know, of, of swamp land. Okay, yeah. well, can I pull up a satellite map? Mm -hmm. And is there any kind of like structures or outbuildings that I can recognize in that area? So, when you look it's at some of the, the satellite photos, you, you do see there's like shanties and there's like little, like little, every once in a while you'll see like small little uh, shanty buildings, you know, sometimes, you know, in series of like three or four. You know, along the river, you know. But other than that, nothing that's going to, you know, be like, we're gang here, you know. Sure. <laughs> you know, we go check. Beware of horse. Local, local yeah. town spots, see if we can drum up some. How about some astral reconnaissance? I could always dip on over there. So, I'm sure they'd be congregating so I have in more hoped. numbers than most other shacks around here. So, so I have thought. Uh, if orcs are well known, very well known to be slavers. Maybe we cut deal with the local sheriff, local law enforcement. We we fix problem. I'll look at Jelly on that one. I feel like telling the law we're gonna go do illegal stuff feels like a misstep. <laughs> uh. He's is not. Uh, we we no tell. We take back. We reappropriate. Earn. We we let know that we have dealings. Maybe we wonder uh, what uh, what would 
what would be outcome if slavers were not here anymore? I, I hear your your logic, but I think maybe we'll save talking the law for like a plan like F or G. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I I see. We we uh, we ask for forgiveness, not for permission. This has got to be the virus talking or something, right? Yeah, I mean, if, if we're if we're doing it right, we won't ask anything. Can somebody check his temperature? I'll, like, reach back and mom arm you. Does he feel like he is? Oh, I'm going to be warm. We're in He's the warm. fucking bayou. Yeah, it's, it's sweltering down here. So <laughs> You're sweating through your clothes, you know. It's yeah. He's he's warm. Big pit touch. circles. Yeah, yeah, pit circles. You know. I mean. So let me tell you what I'm gonna look for. So I'm gonna look on like the local internet for like Facebook groups, like neighborhood watches or something like that kind of thing. Neighborhood watches. Yeah, like like. Okay. You're gonna go on the Shadowlands BBS. You can go on the Shadowlands BBS. There's a bunch of different data points you can go and view. You know, various threads. You can go on some of the local threads. They're yeah, talking about and I'm just kind of like on our like, way back. I want to see like because like. In our area, we have really detailed community postings about what's going on. Mm-hmm. Is there anything about, like, works in the bayou? Or uh, Spalding specifically? Go ahead and give me a investigation or a computer roll. Math. Like, we're already on a run. Well, that's, <laughs> you guys well, are trying what, to double dip here. That's what I mean. What <laughs> like, it's inception, you know? If somebody wants Dream. these guys dead yeah. and we dead them, it's why not computer? computer? Yeah, it'd be computer yeah. or electronics. Electronics. Electronics, yeah. yeah. Uh, you kid, do you know anybody who wants them dead? <laughs> so now when you're talking, so just to, just to, you know, bring it into perspective. So when you talk about slavers, all right, the way Big Mama's talking, those are the pirates of the Caribbean. So if could you explain that a little, like, do we know, would we know anything about these guys? Or are they were super local? Because, I mean, like, I feel like if there was, like, I think even from Seattle, you've heard of the yeah. Caribbean League, right? The Caribbean League is, is a host of... You know, there's a lot of pirate activity in the Gulf of Mexico, uh-huh. right, and the Caribbean, right? And there's huge, it's, it's common knowledge that there's huge slave trade that goes on between the mainland of, of different areas of, you know, of, of the continent and into the Caribbean. There's a lot of human trafficking that goes on. So, I mean, it's pretty well known, right? Yeah, you don't need to like, you know, it's not, you know, not going to be any surprise that that, that goes on here. Okay, so then these guys are somebody who's like on Hot Hands known, like, shoot first list. Yeah, you're so, like, you know those pirates yeah. exist. Like, we all know that pirates exist yeah. in the Caribbean. Real pirates. Yeah. You know, and that they're dangerous. You know what I mean? You know, but we've never encountered any of them, thankfully. Right? But if we were out on a freighter in the middle, you know, the Caribbean or something, we might encounter pirates. They might, you know, they'd have their own freighter and they'd board our ship with guns and try and take our ship over. Mm. So that actually really exists. So... The other thing is, we're not being sent to eliminate this gang. We're being sent to get an object. Correct. That's what I'm. That's being a told whole to different do. mission to to do some wet work on this right. whole gang yeah, right. in their home base, like with uh, the four or five of. Yeah, us. we're shadow running in to get an earth. So, we're not like right. <laughs> salting the earth. Like. Just because we brought a troll along doesn't mean we need to go troll wild on these guys. I, I mean, that's like the back grenades, so. I got four successes. Four successes. Okay, so you find that there are a couple posts where people have talked about running into the Bayou Bandits that are down in a certain area of the swamp. But you also read that people don't go down there. We've read that someone on one of the posts was talking about, for a fee, you can get somebody to carry you down the river sticks so that you could make financial transactions with the local uh, orcs that control that area. Okay. They call, it, they call that section of the river, the Mississippi, the River Sticks. All right. So the local lore. On the, like, Matrix, are there, on the, like, Shadowrunner net, is there, like, a bounty board? Like, yeah. There isn't so much a... Good job board. You got, I mean, with your four successes, you, you find that you didn't find an actual bounty, but you did find enough information that would lead you to believe that if you were to somehow prove that you killed Spalding, there, you know, that you'd probably be able to find somebody that would pay good cred for his head, you know, in order to, in order to maybe, you know, that, that might be a leverage piece for them locally here, you know. So we could have a couple of us go in saying we're making a deal with Spalding, and then have B team come in from the side and search for the urn, and then if we're lucky we grab Spalding's head on the out. So first group would be uh, decoy. Right, and we could, and then B team would bring the the Bonnie or the buggy or whatever that thing is called, and we'd escape on that. 
you got the new guy too, and I'll just kind of look back at him. He's B team. Yeah. He's right in the back of the bulldog, you know, just, you know. Patrick. You know. Patrick. Patrick's hanging out with the bulldog. Why is he smiling at us so big? That's, I mean, that's an option. When you started going down the threads of the orc activity, uh, one of the things that you did find is that the reason why, a couple reasons why the orcs stay to the bayou because they are orcs and trolls. It doesn't look like, looks like orcs and trolls are just blatantly shunned in the city limits. Elves and trolls seem to be accepted, but the orcs and trolls. Elves and dwarves. Elves and dwarves. Elves and dwarves. What did I say? Oh, yeah, I was, you said orcs and trolls oh, so, and then trolls and. Trolls and elves, yeah. I mean, so the elves and dwarves seem to be somewhat socially accepted, but the orcs and trolls blatantly shunned and blatantly hated. So Patrick could give us some cred if we go with them. Oh. Well, and Patrick could also create a problem for you in the wrong area. Right, right. so Patrick stays in the van. Okay, another option is we could go, like, I don't know, me and Nomad could go scope it out, get the exact, like, coordinates, and then we come back that night or later on and do, like, a... I don't know, like a total sneak in with the whole team. Nomad's like, yeah, we're going to sneak. Uh, <laughs> is, as much as I you, like that idea. You and Nomad, is is not Hot Hands and, and me go sneak? He go astral, I no, sneak? Is this urn magically active? Would we have reason to believe don't, that that's no. the case? Assume okay. yes. So I think it would be a lot easier to have Hot Hands assuming that they're not also... Astrally defending is, themselves, is, is which is a possibility. As well. You know, but like that, that's a good start. See if we can see it that way. Yeah, I agree. And if we have to sneak in and look for it, then that's where I would come in. The other thing is, if you want, I could just go in there and kick the hornet's nest and run. I, see what kind of defense they got. I don't think that's a good idea at this point. That's While we have the like, element why? of surprise, we should leverage uh, I that. Could go, you know, give them some astral once we have the urn, then we can go into Napalm territory. If, if we can find where the urn's located, it's possible we can get in and out without them knowing at all. What time of day is it? I, I do it's have afternoon. Um, improved visibility. I can turn myself invisible. Quite so let's go up. grab some food. You can astral project. We'll see if we can find the urn that easily. And if not... Uh, I wouldn't mind trying some fried gator bits while we're here. We should try beignets. Okay. Eat your tail beignets. Um, I've honestly always wanted to have those, um, one of those things where they, uh, the, the boils, where they have the big crab boils. Crab the big boils. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll bring Patrick out some food. And I have heard of uh, sandwich uh, muffaletta. Yeah, uh, there's actually quite a lot of food-based things that I would eat. <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> good food down here. With a Cajun cooking egg. Yeah, man. <laughs> I, I like... The size is cool product. All right, so we're sitting at the checkered tables in the barn, and do your thing. All right, so you guys are gonna go find a place. To, you're gonna find a stuffer shack somewhere. You're gonna yeah. try some of the local yeah. stuff. You know, you find a place. It's like a chain. You know, but it's Hot but eyes. it's but it's foreign <laughs> to you, right? It's foreign to you. Louisiana. You know? Yeah, right. You know, it's Louisiana. You know, food, and uh, you know, you got the red beans and rice. You know, you've got the jambalaya. You got the gumbo, you grape know, Kool-Aid, so the, the green Kool-Aid, the grape Kool-Aid, the sweet tea, you know, the grape Kool-Aid, you know. Going, going back to Seattle, Stuffer Shack's going to be real difficult. Like. Food's good, you know. Sweet potato pie, even. All right, yeah. um, I need you guys to keep shoveling this food in my mouth. I'm going to astral project. So you're going to do some astral tracking? Yeah. Is what you're going to do? All right. So, uh, I've, I've taught myself to eat an astral uh, <laughs> form, so just eat, shove it in my mouth, yeah. and I will chew. I'll, I'll take care of the chewing, yeah. You yeah. shove it in there for me. Just, you just put, put bite in every mouth. It's like <laughs> putting gunpowder in a long rifle, like, keep shoving it down. Right. So it looks like he's masticated enough. Shove it yeah. in there, we'll go to the next step. Uh, I know how much food is there as well if anybody tries to take so I will know. <laughs> <laughs> There's 13 and a half shrimpies there, don't you fucking touch So, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna do some astral tracking. And because, I because this isn't an active, you're not tracking an astral signature that might be linked to the urn. It's gonna be pretty difficult. But so basically, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be projecting into the astral space and trying to cover blank and kind of canvas the area. And to see what you what you get, right? Yeah. yeah, you're kind of going back and forth, right? All right, yeah. So I'm just okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make an astral tracking test, uh, which is going to be astral plus intuition. Awesome. All right, and then uh, you're gonna have a threshold, right? 
So you don't know what that threshold is. So you're going to begin scouting. I specialize in astral signatures too, so that kind of helps. All right. Now, as you go out into the astral plane, as you get out, you know, it's the speed of thought. So, but you do need to slow down enough to where you can actually take in information. So you're like at cruising speed. You're going to notice that there are several astrally awakened things along the river in the water. Mm. And then you're also going to see several astral signatures that are in the bayou and the swamp itself. So when you see an astral signature, are you going to, I mean, obviously, these are these are things that are moving. This is not an, an, an inanimate object or anything like that. You know, these are probably animals that are yeah. awakened. I, what I want Snakes, to think crocodiles. Is, if they're small, I'm not going to pay much attention. Because I know that awakened animals exist, and that's not as interesting. Okay. What I'm looking for is more probably concentrated pockets okay. of like that. And unless anybody wants me to spend more chips, which I could if I spend two, move this four to a five. I have actually several fours, yeah. but do you guys want me to spend two? Spend two? Sure. Okay. So go and give me two chips. So that is three two successes, unless you guys want me to spend them. Okay. Well, you decide how many you're going to spend here after you made the roll. Yeah. So you can spend uh, I two? Think, I think three you going to go good. with three? Yeah, okay. I think three successes. So you spend an hour, right, searching. You see several astral signatures. You do not see anything that might give you an inclination that it might be what you're looking for, nor have you seen anything it looks like sometimes. And you've seen a lot of shanty buildings and things like that along the area, but you haven't found something that looks like, you know, okay. maybe maybe what you're looking for. So you can, at this point, you can continue to track, or you can come back. If it's I mean, actually been an hour, you should come back, yeah. re-look so at the map, and head back out again, trying to look at not oh, necessarily... not seeing like any collection of awakened humanoid size. I mean, not, a, not don't have to be awakened. We're just looking at auras, like humanoid-sized auras living out there. Like So auras... Like, he doesn't have could to, also they don't be have to hiding be, it, too. Right. I know, well, but just a bunch every, of... Not everyone has an astral signature. Right? Well, they, all living things have an aura visible to them. Right, but it's not... They don't, they don't illuminate themselves like magical signatures yeah. do. Right. And of, of any place we're going, a rainforest, a teeming heat biosphere like the bayou right, but, is going to be very difficult. No, totally. To see. Yeah. No, I get that. Think, think it's teeming with life. This yeah. is all hues of, say, red. <laughs> yeah, right. So you got to figure out. Yeah, it's size thing. Yeah, it's teeming with life, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, well, then yeah, I'll come back. I'll, okay. you know. Bam. I, oh, thank you guys. Uh. Yeah, I I didn't find them yet. Uh, I could look at the map and try once more if you want. It just depends on how much y'all want me to check. Then, Vatris. You know that sometimes concerned. astral tracking takes time. Yeah. Right. So but it, and you're in the astral space. You do present. You open yourself up to any other dangers that might be. Yeah. Right? You know. So I can go out there. Sometimes it just takes. Time. We could order another round. I mean, I would not say more or notice more hush puppies. Please continue. Yeah. I'll go mouth. crack the window for Patrick. Okay, all right. Yeah. And, oh, or yeah. crack what? the window for Patrick oh, so he can get some fresh air. It's been an hour. He's all <laughs> cooking in that thing. <laughs> we didn't leave him the keys. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good? You still want to be in our crew? That's great. Yeah. He's all, screw you guys. The back door is just open. <laughs> all right. So you're going to go back out. Go back all right, out. so go ahead and give me another astral track. You roll. So you know three wasn't enough before. You got a cop, you got a cop spin die there. Point. Damn. Okay, uh, so I got three. I could spend two. Yeah, obviously. We don't have any more. Oh, he knows. We had these two. These were the same. Yeah. yeah. Oh, those are yours, and now you're three. two less. Now you're down to one. All right. Okay, so, that's so now four. you have four. Started with the group so with average. four, right, which was oh, the yeah. threshold. Yes. All right. So with four, you've come across something. Something piques your, your curiosity. There's something along a piece of water that is on a central island, and it's kind of kind of surrounded by marsh and, and you know it's submerged but then this island has t three large well three structures on it with a bridge that goes out but you see walking back and forth across the bridge are look to be large armed figures oh. facing the bridge so as you continue to look you're going to see that there is an astral signature coming from the largest of the three buildings uh. it's a stationary signature here we go. And so looking around, do I, I don't see any, like, you know, astral shielding. You don't see any astral shielding. As you you, you go in, uh, well, actually, I'm going to say you noticed it through, I mean, you noticed it through a window, yeah. right? Because you can't see through the wall. So you go in and you, you cross over into the building. You see that on the shelf is something that looks small and round. Could be an urn, 
but it's magically active and it's sitting on a shelf. Oh, now would you look at that? And I and there in if I remember right, there's almost nothing you can do to interact with the physical world. Correct. Okay. Inside here are three individuals. They could be orcs. They actually, you know, when you look at them, they're either large humans or they're, you know, maybe orc. They're not definitely not trolls. They're mm -hmm. definitely not elves. And one of them is, seems to be swinging in a large hammock while the other two are standing by the door. Okay. Can I hear them? I don't know if no. I... No. Okay, I didn't think... Uh, so then I'll say, okay, well, I'm thinking this is the right place. Okay. So then I'm going to basically zip straight up All right. and see where they are. Kind of where you're at and take note of your location. Take and then... note of landmarks in the okay. area and basically just track my way back so okay. I know the exact, like... Well, you see the way, so yeah. there's a long bridge and it looks to be about 60 meters uh -huh. long. And that goes out and the water comes all the way around this central island. Right, so everything underneath it's submerged, right? Almost like a moat around it. Yeah. And then there's other swampland, you know, trees and things like that uh, that are around this outside of the perimeter. But it creates this water perimeter around this. Looks like a fair would be a fairly defensible island. And the island's probably about, you know, 100 yards wide. And there's these three structures, two smaller hut-like structures and a larger one in the middle. Um, one other thing actually before I leave here that I want to Oh, you're also going to see several swamp buggies. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're going to see about four swamp buggies that appear to be kind of moored up onto the, you know, docked by that, by that bridge. I would like to go beneath the water, and I want to see if there's actual signatures down there. Okay, so you go under the water, go and give me a perception roll. Ooh, this is going to be fun. I love a good heist. <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward three episodes, and we're all like... <laughs> two. <laughs> ah! So I have two. So did you... Go under the water. Now, what are you looking for down there? So I'm looking for awakened creatures Alligators. or anything that's basically magic, like magical traps. So I'm yeah. thinking, oh, I, could, I might be able to sneak my way in here. Right. So. so as you go under the surface of the water, you notice that there is a large astral signature there. Oh. And it also notices you. <gasps> right? Yeah. It appears to be a large crocodile. That's what I was thinking. Right? So it's going to see you and it's going to move towards you. Go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was like, am I about to see an astral Fucking croc, okay. Is, oh, oh, alligators or crocodiles? It's crocodile. It's crocodile. No, no, no. There's a crocodile down there, whatever, but an alligator. Wait, no, no, it's, it's an alligator. alligator. Sorry, alligator. it's a large alligator. I don't know. Uh, okay, luckily that's uh, 15. Alright, okay, so you're first. <laughs> Whale <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, my, I mean, my initial thing, idea is to get the fuck out of there. Okay, so you're gonna get out of the water? Yeah, yeah, so I, right. I zip. And this crocodile is large. Yes, yeah. It's large. Alright. And it is awake. Like, so, what did you say, like twenty oh, feet? Huh? Twenty feet? It's probably a, it's probably a nine foot Dave, long alligator. Actually, oh. this is gonna be to my detriment a little, but I don't necessarily want to go up because that means it's gonna go up and it's gonna break the surface. Well, the might... alligator can't necessarily fly, can't necessarily no. project. It's, a, it's just awakened. You see its astral signal. What I mean is, is that thing getting agitated? It might be trained to look for astral signatures, which means they might look. So what I want to do is, is I basically want to well, be in the water. So you know from your hermetic uh -huh. studies that most just simply awakened creatures, it doesn't mean that they have any way. They're just awakened. They're innate, natural. They're dual I'm, nature. They're so dual they're nature thinking, experience, but I guess yeah. I'm under the assumption this is like a pet more. No, this is no. like a, this is like an awakened animal oh, so in, in that just, water. I'm just. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a moat full of sharks, but instead of a shark, <laughs> it's an alligator. Wait a minute. And it's a wicked alligator, so it's probably a lot stronger than a regular alligator. Uh huh. Yeah. But not necessarily like more intelligent. Not necessarily, not necessarily. more intelligent, right? It's just okay. dual nature, so it can affect things I on the astral plane and like... the material plane. It's an awakened critter. Okay. okay, wait. I was thinking they were like smart. I want to make a little. In some in some cases they can be, but you know you know in this case you know but you're gonna like... feel fairly safe. Like wow, there's a there's an awakened alligator there. You're not gonna think like hey that alligator is gonna chase me down or it's gonna run in and tell. Whoever's okay. in those huts, that hey, there's, we, we got people, you know. No, it's not like that. Can okay. it be like that? Is there a way to make animals? Come? Yeah, like my, yeah, but my, the reason I have parazoology is because the tier special forces use awakened oh. creatures as weapons. That's right. cool. But it's very rare and very hard, mm -hmm. and it takes a lot of trained no. mages that are not easy to come by. Right. So. so what I, what my thought actually is at this moment is, well, I might have found a way to in their ranks a little bit. So, okay. my objective is <laughs> I would like to throw a 
basically low level magic. I want to throw a mana bolt at it in the idea of pissing it off. Okay. And then I am going to bolt towards the island, basically, and fly past it. I'm trying to lure it to go onto the island and see those people walking by. Okay, okay. Because right. to them, it might just be a fucking, you know, hey, there's a croc. Yeah. So, go ahead and cast your spell. Mana bolt, just yeah. the lowest level, like... Well, when you this cast Mana Bolt, recon it's mission to not a, the lowest, like, when oh, you cast Mana Bolt, you, your successes deal with That's, not That's what I mean. I'm yeah. just, I'm just thinking, like, I don't want to throw, like, a fireball at it. I just mean, like, basic magic. We have no idea. It, used to, be in, it used to be in Shadowrun in previous editions where you decide what potency you cast that spell. You're like, I'm going to cast a deadly Mana Bolt, and then you'd resist deadly oh, drain. Oh, wait. Uh, physical versus. The mages in there can see astral signatures if there's like been magic yeah. done, right? Alright, so if you cast yeah. a spell, that creates a link to its caster for a certain amount of time. No, okay, then I, then I would track. know that. So I won't cast a spell. Basically, if it sees me and it's angry, I'm just gonna basically fly out for my turn towards those people because I'm thinking they're. Well, the people are walking on yeah. the bridge, right? Yes. There's two people walking on the bridge. The bridge, like I said, about 60 yards long. It ends at the island. From the island shore, it's about another 25. You know, meters to the two huts, and then about another ten meters back is the large hut in the in the middle. I'll make it simple. My objective is to bait the alligator to try and follow me towards the people going across the bridge, okay. and then I am going to fly off. The right. objective is to have alligator go after them. Well, the bridge is on stilts, yeah. so it's above the water line by probably a good three meters. Oh, three meters! <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be a little silly if the water was washed well, up over the yeah. fucking bridge. Right? I didn't, I didn't know how high it was. Plus, okay. The, the river changes height a lot. Right. Well, so, darn it, then. I, you know what? I'm just gonna keep. I'm falling. going to keep it under a possible useful creature later on. So then I will just leave back to them. Okay, you're gonna leave it alone. All right. Yeah. So, all right. Go. Did you so, look at the earth? You, you see that. You I can, can't. Like, if I go in there, they're at the oh. people are astrally. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't say the, the people inside weren't weren't astrally active. Oh, I thought one the of them was. The only astral signature that you saw was something on the shelf. Oh, well, I th I can't learn. T can I learn a little bit in the astral about it? Can I? You, you can go you look know? at. You can it. I can go look it. at it. Yeah. Then yeah, I'll go do. That. If I don't, if I don't see them as astral, like and nothing awakened in that building. Sure, I've, I'm historically curious, so I'll go in there. <laughs> okay. right. So you do see that there's something on the shelf. And it looks, it could be, you know, it looks a small size, brown, you know, it's circular, and it's sitting on the shelf with what appear to be maybe books. I would like to Astro to look at it. Okay, so go ahead and give me a sensing test. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so uh, you learned that the item, look at my, the kind of clues that it gives you. It's initiated at level nine. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, it is. It's a greater Loa captured inside. Oh, I just had it right there. <laughs> General state. It is an awakened. You know, it's it's a magically active thing. It doesn't have any cyberware. Present location of any alphaware implant. So, yeah, you don't really get much from from it since other than it is actually mad. It has a magical signature. Well then, no. shucks. I guess if I so if, if it doesn't give me anything else, then at least I'm like this is most likely it. Is it bigger than a bread box? Is it bigger than a bread box? Than a bread it's box? A, no. It's an urn. So yeah. No, I think we're good. So then I'm like, well, this should be easy. It's the general shape of an earth. Yes. It's circular. Uh, has a kind of a relatively flat top, and it's sitting on a shelf next to what looked to be, you know, a row of books. You see okay. the general shape. You just can't make out the, the writing on the books. And what yeah. They might be. Okay, when you come back, I'm like holding a pen out to you, and there's like a blank, like the map's turned over so you can draw on it. Yeah, one of the things that you, you know, you do see as you fly up and come out, you see that there is a fairly clear water path that leads if you take it it runs out and connects with the river and you can follow the river back up to within about a quarter mile of where the stuffer shack is awesome so i'll, I'll follow that up and yeah, as i come back I, oh, oh oh right so and i'll pick up a hush puppy and yeah all right i found them uh they're <laughs> gonna be located about right here if we go go out this way about a quarter mile go down the river we'll we'll, we'll get them right here now i was being just there, I didn't see many people. I didn't even see no awakened folk there right now. I mean, I did find myself uh, an awakened alligator that almost did snap my head. Uh, but I found the urn, at least something urn shaped. So uh, I'm guessing this is probably it. It's pretty defensible. Hot hands, uh, this is your department, but uh, I was told it, it was. Uh, 
orc who was uh, covered in fetishes. Would would fetish appear to you in in astral? So it, t- it tell me if I'm wrong, but if it was a, a folk eye, then it should because if it, it was a fo- the, if it was a folk yeah. eye, then it would appear magical. But if it's just, it's just a, a fetish, then fetish it, yeah, it's just basically just components and they think are chicken feet and you know yeah, bat yeah. ears and things like that that I, they use. And you know. I would I would have seen a magically active fetish. So is no one no one's like you that I saw that, that you saw. I mean, no, it could be a good time to go in. Mind you, there is the alligator, so we won't be careful of that. Might be able to use it to our advantage as a distraction of some sort. Is decoy. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I mean, going in right now doesn't seem like too bad of an idea. And it's like, what, 4.35 now? It's about 6. It's about 6. Mm-hmm. We can go in at It's fall, so it's probably getting dark around 8 o'clock. So you got about another couple hours of sunlight. Going in filtered, <laughs> filtered swamp sun. Now, right see, now, see, we got us a problem though. Is that if we're going by boat, they're gonna hear us miles away. Uh-huh. If we're going on feet, well, gosh damn it, I almost got my head bitten off by an alligator. How big is the boat? Can we like paddle it? Can we shut the engine and paddle it some distance? Um, Do we have any paddles as yeah. part of the boat? You don't have any oars, right? They didn't come with any oars. Uh, it's got an <laughs> engine. It does have a small, you know. It has a trolling motor, so you don't have to use the main buggy engine. It does have a small trolling motor that you could use to uh, maybe pilot down a little yeah. bit more quietly. But it's not going to be completely silent, but a lot quieter than the, you know, you know, the big uh, you know swamp buggy motor. But then you'd be obviously a... reduced in speed. You're going pretty slow with the trolling motor. Hot hands, did you see like a road or any vehicles to a way to get to it by land? No, uh, this thing was an island in of itself. It kind of had a moat like situation going around it. Do you have any, like, projection spells? I mean, I can astrally project and go cast spells in no, the astral world. No, what but... I mean is, like, can you propel the boat magically? Ooh, no, that one. That one ain't gonna work out, unfortunately. I mean, could. So, oh. how many people did you see? On island. I mean, I think you I saw, saw about... three. You saw three in the one building, but you only went into one of the three buildings. You saw three yeah. in there, and two out on the bridge. Yeah, so three in one building, two on a bridge. So I saw five. I didn't go into the other buildings. So the two other buildings. I would anticipate a place that big. You know, five, ten people probably. When we were transporting Pearl and the door fell off, you had a spirit hold the door in place. Could a spirit pull the boat? We don't need it to pull us back. I'll say, well, now that's a damn fine idea right there, Jelly. That's why we that's why we follow you. Yeah, I suppose I could get us a spirit. Hell, I could probably get us a water spirit to just shift us along the water. Yeah. Well, well that feels pretty viable. Damn it, Jelly. That's a good idea. I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look off into the middle distance for a second. I think, I think that's a great idea. I've been outmaged by Jelly. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was pretty good. Yeah. So... Well, I guess let's let's rest up, clog our arteries a little bit more, and then head on out. Yeah, like at sunset. Yeah, I think so. Going at night. Okay. Cool. We're just winging it. I love it. I guess you're going into the cover of darkness. You wait a couple more hours, eat some more food. Like, yeah. All right. How many of us can see in darkness, by the way? Who has yeah. low light or thermographic? Do we automatically? Elves do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think MF's got thermographic. I'm vision. thermographic. Okay. So you're thermographic. Elves are low light, aren't they? Yeah. I also uh, have thermographic in one eye with I my cyber a, on. Okay. I have a cyber something. I, I feel like there was stuff. only one of us that could. Yeah, <laughs> I, I thought there was only one that could. I have a light spell if that works. There you works. go. Uh, well, that napalm when I let it out lets off a little bit of a nice glow. It's like an evening blue. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> It's uh, like he can see the the living things. He just uh, can't see the bush and the sticks right in front of us yeah. that are dead. All right. Uh, well, maybe I could have a night vision spirit come down. <laughs> How many spirits? Can um, you can have yeah. as many. I think you can have as many spirits bound as your magical attribute. Yeah. No, I'll um, I'll focus on the water spirit. So yeah, I mean, if any of us is to not be able to see in this situation, it's probably best that it's hot hands. Great point. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, you guys should see the physical can, stuff. I can googly eyes. My job uh, should be like, hey, there's there's a alligators. But if you get to services, maybe you can stay near the boat and have the spirit guard you. Yeah. And you can accompany well, us astrally. And I can. Oh, oh good thing. Yeah. Remember, he's in the astral plane. He can't affect anything on the in the meat uh, world. I, it, now, um, if somebody astrally projects, then I can put them. Can I? Can if I? they're dual natured, you can affect. Right. Yes, yeah. if they're dual, if they're dual natured. natured. Right. Somebody who's doing magic. So if I see another mage and I'm oh. looking at them in the astral plane, if I cast magic at them, it doesn't yep. hurt them because they're are they dual? Am I considered dual natured? No. Okay. So you are astrally active when you project. Okay, cool. Then that's then that explains enough for me. All right, so but yeah, you're not a dual. The crocodile is a dual natured okay. creature, right? It, it exists. Like it's both. always seeing the astral plane so and the physical. It plane. can be hurt at things on both. Wow. So it makes yeah. them awful, awfully temperamental. Yeah. 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 And they're already orange. Yeah, they're already pissed off because they've kind of taken two worlds of reality. Yeah. <laughs> Very confusing. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, then I think that we are. We got us a plan. I say yeah. Should now. Question is, are we? Is this a full stealth mission, or should we go? Yes, it's know, good question. Do we? Do we? To the black op? Yes. Yeah, are we procuring like hand grenades from somewhere locally? Ooh, oh. mine. <laughs> I feel like we already got most of what we'll need. Well, I mean, we could open pawn shop next to the hotel. <laughs> I, we're not I, armed for a prolonged. I, fire. I stand on positions that we ask for. Uh, we ask for forgiveness, not permission. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, I guess. But if if we can do damage to slavers, it seems like it's good. Number one, get the urn. If we yes. can get in and out without getting seen, that's yes. the best case scenario. If we get caught up, I mean, yeah. Side quest. <laughs> so do we? Do yeah. we have? Do we have like a little time then before? Optional side quest. Yeah, Kill a bunch of dudes. So then I'll say, do you mind if I go to the local pawn shop? Alright, we're doing another shopping episode. <laughs> well, no, I can just do this real quick. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, back to the pawn shop by the hotel? We have till sundown. Is there one it's about a half hour away. Is we have till sundown. We're is there one close by? I'll ask Not the one that's already going to ship our shit. Yeah. I'll ask the Stuffer Shack people, is there a local pawn <laughs> shop? Pawn <laughs> shop? I need it's some one, It's that Pawn Stars place. Yeah, there's one about out. two blocks down. <laughs> that's oh, that Pawn Stars place. Uh, expand out in Louisiana. The red pawn shop. <laughs> I'd greatly appreciate it. Jelly, I'll be back. Well, and so I basically just go down. I'm going to look at Jelly, wink, and follow him. Okay. You're not going alone. So if anybody... Is, are you following Josh? No? No? No. Uh, so I'll go down to the local pawn shop two blocks away. All right. So you see it's got a sign, Red Pawn. I'll walk in. Uh, good, good afternoon. I'll take my hat off. Huh? Uh, are you uh, Mr. Red? That's me. You see there's a human, overweight human in there who's pawing over some paperwork and looking at, he's looking at a comm link. Is there anybody else in here? Nope. No? I'll look at him and say, uh, Mr. Red, I, uh, I don't have a lot of time and I'm going to cut right to the chase. I'm looking for some special weaponry, uh, looking to see if you got anything. <laughs> he's all, hey, let's see what you got, dude. I got a chainsaw over there. And I'll, I'll take out, I'll take out like a cred stick and stick it down, like hopefully one that signifies it's a significant amount. What does a significant amount mean? Five, five thousand, let's say. So you pull out a uh, five thousand yeah. cred stick. I'll say, uh, what I'm looking for is hand grenades. Do you have any? Hand <laughs> He's all no. He said, I'll tell you what. What I do have is this. You must be pretty desperate. You got another one of these things? Two points of cred stick. I said, well, depending on what you got, I just might, friend. I might cut you into my personal inventory for, you know, <laughs> if I was able to close early. <laughs> and I'll take out another, take out another cred stick and say again, depends on what. Yeah, you closing early depends on what you got. And how much is on the other cred stick? Another five thousand. Oh, he slides them both over to him. He's like, "Why don't you turn that uh, that open sign? Why don't you just unplug that from the wall you. over there?" I have. Yeah. I'll go turn it. Uh, lock the door. No. And as I'm walking back. Uh, also, if if you have uh, F N H A R, what's an F N H A R? H H H H. H. What, what's your friend saying? Ah, uh, he wants an assault rifle. Uh, don't have any of those. Sorry. I tell you what, I do have though. Got no, baby. specific. Oh, is is good. Is good. Okay, good. I guess he's good. All right. <laughs> he's good. So he's off. Let's see. So he comes back with like 
The old wooden crate with rope handles. <laughs> I fucking love this. I'm like, uh. <laughs> And he's all, uh, it's wet TNT. Big Jelly says it's down right Wet TNT. <laughs> and he's like, now, uh, I don't know what y'all are planning on doing with this, but uh, this, will, this will get your job done. I'll like grab the ropes and I'll say, uh, yes, I think this should do just fine. Okay. Uh, yes. Yep, and I'll, I'll go ahead and lift it, <laughs> lift it up. Huh? Uh, I'll lift the crate box top open. And huh? it it's like, oh, oh. Yep. Uh, as you lift it up, you yep. see it's. There's a bunch of wet dynamite in there. Uh, with, you know, with exactly. You don't need dynamite, dynamite on this heist. And then I, I lower the top and I say... There's probably about 12 sticks of dynamite in there. This isn't a bank robbery. I'll say, I think this will be <laughs> mighty fine. Uh, and he's yeah. like, let me get the door. Yeah. You have... You, I'll lift it up nice and easy. I'll say, you have a nice uh, early night. And you have a wonderful evening. Who As he doesn't... picks it up, I'm going to zip to the door, unlock it. But he open the door. Ten thousand dollars so, for twelve sticks. Ten thousand for a truck and ten thousand yeah, for twelve sticks. Guy. So you done spent half your payday on the very first vacation we took. <laughs> I Most, don't care. That's what vacations are for. <laughs> you got wet dynamite. Okay, but see the way I look at it Put is that on your carry on luggage. The money we just got was horseshit money anyway. We we lucked into that, so I'm gonna use my money. All right. <laughs> okay, so I have twelve sticks of dynamite. You got twelve sticks of wet dynamite. Uh, what? Well, you keep saying that. What is that? What is there different? Wet dynamite. So it's it's oozy and it's nitroglycerin, right? Oh, the age, which so it's makes old it super volatile. Gotcha. One false vibration could set the dynamite off. Fabulous. Right. So let's go put it in our fucking van. Like a bump in the road <laughs> and can cause the whole thing to boom. <laughs> so I I go and I set it in Speed the back bump. of the van. Oh, no. I say, Patrick, um. Don't jostle this at all. Okay. And I'll say, just keep an eye on this. Don't let anybody come near the, the, the thing, the car. Right. Um, and then I'll go back inside, and I'll sit down, take my hat off, put it on, and I'll say, well, uh, if you want, uh, Jelly, I, I procured something that could be another mighty good um, distraction. MF's face is not going to look good. What does MF know about explosives? Yep. MF may know about them, but I didn't see what was in there. I'm just okay. making assumptions. All right. Remember, I'm not what tall enough to see into, into the... I mean, it was up on the counter. It looks like a dynamite crate. Right, exactly. So I'm it saying... It was on I mean, the counter. He pulled good... it from, from in the back. He brought but it What up I'm saying up. is when he looked, opened it up, oh, it's saw. on the counter. I'm not going to be tall enough to I'm see it on the counter. All right, all right. I'm going to say, uh, I procured something a little, I do lean in, uh, explosive that I could send over with a spirit nice and easy like they drop it from on high and like the hand of God we get a little distraction let's try to get the urn stealth mode and if that fails <laughs> shot her from miles whatever the thing is that you have now we can use I wish I'd known that before I spent the money <laughs> well right. after we get the urn you can use it too that's fine I'll, I'll look at you Just like bring we started doing your carry on drop my load. I look at you with big eyes and say afterwards Jelly even if we don't kill all these sons of bitches could I drop the payload on their home anyway yeah that's, that's fine <laughs> I don't uh, you know me, I don't got Blood no soft thirsty. spots for slavers. I suppose we might want to make sure then that there aren't slaves in their <laughs> camp before we... <laughs> I'll look over and Slavers think. have slaves. <laughs> yeah. That is, <laughs> that's actually... A, and then I'll actually... <laughs> that's something I didn't think about. Now I'm like, you got a point on that. We might... We gonna leave them folk there? First earn. Then... Next. All right. If if I am at full, yeah, with no sickness, I vote go back destroy. Okay, there's our plan. Get MF right, and then we'll kill the yeah. t the camp. Circle you know, back uh, destroy the camp. <laughs> yeah. Make I actually, it from orbit. <laughs> I do love the idea of being successful Again. and like leaving on the plane <laughs> as I send a fucking air spirit to just airdrop. <laughs> like, we have out the window. It's all yeah. We have hand-me-down weapons and unreliable explosives. Just well, as a reminder, uh, I have a perfectly. We're fine not exactly shotgun. equipped to go up against. No, I have no sword. Full strength. I do not have so, home F N H A R. I, I am not at top. Where's that map with the cannon? Right. First earn, <laughs> then uh, extracurricular. Uh, and besides that, I mean, yeah. nobody's paying us for that. 
This is all to get MF well, right. This is and a vacation. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> lean, lean it's in. It's not and vacation say, for me. I do not know if I comes you guys up are again. trying to save your, your yeah. MF. Yeah. I'm wearing I am sick. This is a party. Right. It's kind of like. <laughs> Pull out my arms. <laughs> I can see this. No, man. It's kind of like when you're at a bar with your friends, and then a, a couple of like skinheads walk in, and you just think, you know, I really did need a fight tonight, and then you kick the shit out of them, and it's like kind of just, you don't do it because you're getting anything, you're doing it because it's the right thing. This happens often in, in theater? You know, and I look far more often than you'd think, but a lot less since I started going there. I, I try to keep <laughs> my neck out of trouble unless I'm getting paid for it. I'm That's just me. That so you rare. don't want to use explosives? I mean, I, I don't said that. see that as necessary oh, wait, for wait, our wait. objective. No, it's, I no, see it's that as potentially complicating. Oh, you would have loved the window. And way. so, so let's assume we don't, you know, eliminate every target in this camp with these explosives. Then what do we have? Uh, we we have people chasing us back to. Oh. Uh, so Big Mama's so house. Nomad has point. Black up. Ah, kill them right. all. Black up. <laughs> good point, Nomad. You have Thank a you. Good point. And you know what? We got the new guy too, and he really needs to learn we how do, we, we do, do things. Wait, technically, I just realized you're kind of a new guy. <laughs> you're like the, you're that new guy. He's, that he's I, not the FNG. Yeah, I'm no longer I've, the newest. You're guy. not the intern anymore. Now I, you're forgot, the new guy. I forgot how new you are because we have the newest guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, Patrick's like the intern, and you're yeah. like the new guy. I'm you're not the, the one kidding. bringing crates of explosive dynamite that could go off any moment into. You don't know that. <laughs> the only one that knows that there's diamond is, is Hot Hands, unless you shared. So he, you no, are, yeah, he shared. Okay. Right? Well, did he? I mean, I mean he, he just said not, he has an answer. I have. Right? He I said has I have, an explosive. I said answer. explosive. Okay, well, yeah, explosive. You, guys, you, got I will explosive. Admit, you did bring I will, him into the van and go, hey, yeah. make sure nobody touches the. <laughs> I hope Patrick doesn't jostle. <laughs> don't use that as a seat. Okay. All right, Bruno, your character died. <laughs> Patrick sits on the cradle, thought it was a seat. Bam! I do have to oh, text that he's sitting next to a wet diner. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, okay, so we'll be lucky the, if we actually it alive. He, just getting in, if it sits long enough, just getting in the van, he may smell it and know what it is. Mm. Oh, Maybe. But. All right, so our current plan is once it's nighttime, we're going to take the buggy to the water, have a spirit bring us up the river along. Well, we can use the motor to you get You can use there. the motor to get within vicinity. So if okay. you map it out, it's probably like... It's in probably an hour's ride okay. down the river to where this place is. Once we have the spirit pull us close enough that we can get out, and we're going to try to sneak in and get the urn and sneak back out. And okay. then once MF is fine, then we're going to go blow the whole thing up. Right? right? That's so, what we're deciding? Yes. Yes. Remove, so, remove so how, light in so other how areas. how far away are you going to engage the spirit? Well, we, we have to summon the spirit, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. spirit, we yeah. don't have to summon the spirit on the water, right? So, we can just we can. My, you can summon the spirit from anywhere. What, what right, is that's v, what I'm saying. Like, what is V shit? Hot hands summon spirit. Get him locked yeah. and load it, and then just say, hey, when we cut the engine, carry us the rest of right, the way. Right, you can, yeah. You, basically, mm -hmm. you can conjure the spirit, bind it to you with its services, yeah. and, and then, then tell the, call for it yeah. when you get for you. All right, so go ahead and make your conjuring test. You'll do this straight from the bulldog. So everyone has everything they need. Everyone got dressed, snacks, went to the yep. bathroom. I, I I have my like clothes that change colors go into my like night plaid mode. Okay. Got that black and white plaid going. You know, wearing in that all brand honesty, new stuff on this mission. The whole swamp is urinal. You got the ear flaps on your head. I don't, I don't buy stuff to not <laughs> use it. I don't buy stuff to not use it. <laughs> the exact opposite of me in real life. I, I did a Tough Motor one time, and my coworker from Southern California showed up in like these brand new Jordans that were like oh. super expensive shoes. And I'm like, "Are you sure you want to do this?" He's like, "Yeah, I didn't buy these not to use them." Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and they were they were destroyed. Uh, yeah. Like Fifteen miles later, they were. <laughs> You're the wrong. Okay, so I'm thinking. What, so, would it, do you think it would be more feasible to have an air spirit push us or a water spirit? I think move the water us? spirit sounds brilliant. Water yeah. spirit. Water yeah. spirit would we're not in a sailboat here. Most appropriate. So yeah. we're not in a sailboat. Well, right, and and besides, in the bayou, the bayou, the water is not running most of the place. Mm -hmm. Like right. on the river, it's well, there's a current. It's a lot of but stagnant in water. The bayou, down. yeah, it's just it's, it's a swamp. Yeah, it's just sitting there. It's not yeah. doing anything. So you gotta have we'll awaken mosquitoes. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking damn. we'll trigger the spirit once we're within feasible earshot. I mean, do orcs have what, better hearing? You want to do quarter mile, half mile? 
Do orcs have better hearing? Games? It depends on if they have cyber. They if they're yeah. cybered, naturally yeah. orcs don't have heightened hearing. Games. I'm thinking that out in the. You have better hearing than orcs. But there's a lot. So remember this: that out on the swamp, out on the bay, there's a lot of sounds. Yes. There's a lot of life out there. There's a lot of crickety sounding, weird sounding bullfrogs, all kinds yeah. of stuff that are squawking and creaking out there at night. It's loud out there. At the same time, no <laughs> self-respecting group of pirates, slavers, go-gangers, any of that shit are going to all be sleeping even if they are yeah. out on an island. I oh, well, right. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be doing what they can to keep themselves safe. In the event that we encounter pirates, kill on sight. I don't personally don't know how far away we should start, but just well, I you, mean, you decide how far away we're going to start now. And then I think you have the water spirit take us the whole damn way. And you know the water oh, spirit's yeah, not, gonna, not necessary. It's not yeah. going to take you nearly we, as fast as as the motor no. will. So yeah. it's, it's we just a, get like a, around the bend and then let him just carry us the last. Yeah, it's an hour trip. It's not using yeah. you know the, the swamp buggy's speed to a certain point. You know, so it's not like just oh I can see it's well, over there. We're not going like a couple hundred like yards. We're going like several miles. Can I make a logic roll to figure out how far away we should cut the engine? Uh I, yeah sure. Okay. Give it a whirl. I'm thinking between a half mile and a I mean, mile like, if we're out. standing on the water right now, then all we're hearing is that ambient noise Dave described. Yeah, like, right. so. bugs. Yeah. yeah. Swishing. Like, yep. Water yeah. lapping. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while you hear something extra, you know, some, yeah. uh, you know, some other sound. Something, yeah, some other sound. Something trips in through the swamp. Do, do, do we qualify that as you other? Success. You're going to assume that, you know, if you probably cut, like, a mile. You're thinking, okay. you know, if we, we do it a mile, we should be safe. Okay. As long as... Barring you know, you know any explosion or anything weird going on, it's also very dark out there. And the nomads, the stealth guys. So I'm gonna say, do you think a mile is so, is sufficient? Yeah, I, I think that's more than enough. All right. Well, uh, so we we go out, and then I'm gonna just kind of walk over to the edge of the water, and you guys are gonna see me kind of squat down. So you're gonna go outside the van. You're gonna go to the water and some of the spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. you guys see me squat down and, uh, and basically kind of just look around. I just put my hand in the water, kind of swoop it around and go, and make like a quick whistle, like, and just like a little, like, melodic, clearly mathematical whistle and be twirling the water. And so I summon a Force 2 spirit. You attempt to summon a Force 2 spirit. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I, so I, I, I rolled while you guys were talking. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. yeah. So I got the, so I needed four hits to hit right, to, to summon it. Force to and, summon it with yeah. every net, every additional net hit gives you a, a, a service yeah well so it says just net hits so net hit so you need a you have a threshold I, of a four, four and so i made four so that means i get four i think it's i don't um, i don't I think, it's, think so yeah, i think it's net so it's above and beyond the hits that you need to actually summon and bite the way the way it's, let me let me let me double yeah, check the way it sounded was is that i get a number of services based on my my net hit it could be which, right let me just double check here. which oh. would be awesome it makes sense because you're binding a higher level spirit. I guess, conjuring. But. All right, summoning. So you roll a conjuring plus magic mm -hmm. versus a force times two. Oh, I'm rolling. It's an opposed roll. So, so you're rolling two. I get to roll four dice versus your however many successes. You oh, got. so then Net I got hits yeah. or services. Oh, okay. So I got four. Yes. Yeah, you got four. I've got none. Okay, so, so four services. That's, that's awesome. That's the best you've ever done. Oh yeah. And so I'm a little too spirit. <laughs> so I just yeah swirl the water and just kind of like yeah. bloop. So you create this this water spirit. I'll say, hey, uh, actually, it's not it's not visible to the yeah. naked eye of you guys because it's on the astral plane, and, and it's so little. Yeah. Uh, hey, <laughs> hey, bud. Uh, I'm gonna need. You like, hey, bud. Um, so I'm gonna need you. Uh, so I guess my first one. You is... know, you've got it yeah. bound, so you don't need. Yeah. A, so you've bound the spirit. You so, don't need to. You need to resist the drain. Yeah. But you, you don't need to uh, really tell it anything. It's bound, and it's okay. not happy about it. So it'll it, but it's, follow me without it, it, me telling it. It's in the astral plane unless you tell it to do it's something. Waiting for right. You issue its commands. It's so it's waiting for me. So I'll say... Uh, so you could summon it at a later time. You've got to you know, make a note. You've got a Force 2 bound yeah. water spirit with four services. So I'll say, I'll be calling for you in a little bit. Thanks, bud. And Thanks, kinda, pal. Kind of ripples and disappears. Yeah, they, typically spirits don't like being called into service because they're they're forced to do your bidding. Yeah, right. I, I try to be nice to them if I can, even though I know they hate it anyway. Right. 
So uh, then threaten I'll, him with a sponge. I'll no. come back and you know just threaten be like pulling a, a hanky out of my jacket, wiping my hand off, and say, mm-hmm. "All right, I got us a nice little spirit to do the work." So I say we go on in because I'm sure at this point we probably hear other boats going around. Like I don't. Oh, hear all kinds of noise. It's yeah. not. Yeah, you guys are. But like, there's civilization. You're yeah. not in the middle. Yeah, of we're nowhere. still in well, town we're too. Still in we may town. be at a boat dock. You're, southern, we're in yeah, town. you're a boat dock. You're the yeah. southern side of town. The French Quarter is kind of the southeast portion along that Gulf side there. So if you come down to that southern tip, you know you're going to get into the Mississippi right there. Yeah. So uh, and there's other. You see boats going by. I mean, Mississippi's a busy river. Yeah. So there's barges, different things. It's constantly going. Once we need them, uh, yeah, that spear will be ready for us. Right. So you guys gonna go do go to the boat launch and launch the uh, swamp buggy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you get the swamp buggy in the water without any problems. So Patrick's gonna wait in the van, right, and make <laughs> sure nobody messes with the van while you guys, you know, go and make sure no one jostles that. Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> so you're leaving the you're leaving the dynamite there, All right? So the five of you or the four of you get into the swamp buggy. Who's piloting the swamp buggy? You are? Do you have piloting? No. Okay. I don't think anybody does, do we? It's, it's a piloting. boat. He has piloting. Piloting. Oh, it's, it's a, a boat motor. I don't know that Doug I have still to. piloting, yeah. I'm just saying. You can pilot things without yeah, piloting. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Without making a so, test. Yeah. I'll if say. you don't have to be. <laughs> yes. Uh, Anyone pilot. at this table could pilot any boat that's that's got a little teeny motor. Well, if you want to start doing crazy shit like jump and stuff, that kind of stuff, that's where the skill matters. Well, the, yeah. reason, the reason I ask is you know that you're going into a territory of... Swamp buggy gangers. Oh. Yeah. They're going to have swamp buggies. You guys are in a swamp buggy, so if something I mean, happens where you got to do, that's what I'm saying. I'm here, like, take over. Yeah, it's not going to be yeah. that hard, but you know, just depends. Give me the stick. Yeah. <laughs> so just be you. ready, Nomad. Yeah. Just got to be ready. And if I and if I call for a test, if you're the one currently piloting it, then you don't get to add that pilot. If, if let's say like an awakened alligator suddenly bumped us from below, <laughs> <laughs> could happen. I now have the like Captain Hook Awakened alligator. Sturgeon or something yeah. out of the Mississippi, right? <laughs> An awakened <Pike>. Sturgeon. <laughs> yep. Could happen. They're out there. Yeah. So you can use the swamp buggy's motor. Nothing conspicuous about hey, all you guys are getting into the swamp buggy and you're going yeah. down, you know, down the down the river. What the hell right. are those guys doing? <laughs> all right. So you get in and, and you, you head out. All right. Yeah, you're gonna make it down until you're about a mile out. Uh-huh. All right. So we can use the big fan initially. Yeah. Yes. Then we can switch down to the trolling motor. Mm. And then we can switch to the spirit. Yeah, so we'll we'll yeah. go down. We'll you know we'll gradually we'll right. get there. And then as soon as we we get look to, like tourists anyway, yeah. so it's perfect. As you go along the river, you you are going to see you know there are other every once in a while you'll pass somebody going the other way. And people for the most part are fairly you know they they wave you know as yeah. they go oh, by yeah, you, you know the, you see people wave. kind of moored up you know you see a couple parties you know you see some elves partying on like a party boat you know. They're, you know, they're half naked and, and jumping off the top deck, you know, into the Tons water. Tons of banjos. You know, yeah, you know, there's... Wait there's... a minute. Uh, Jelly, we need to go back. Right? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> right, you see that? elves? Topless yeah. elves, you say. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I've seen this late night on the info <laughs> <Yeah, gone> wild. <laughs> <laughs> I need a few autographs. <laughs> is, is, that, is that Trixie Tricks? Yeah, right. I gotta go... <laughs> <laughs> you see several little shanties along the water. There's different shops. There's places you can stop to get drinks. And people advertising food, live bait, things like that as you go down the river. We're filming Tear Tushy. Tear What? <laughs> right. So, you, 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 you see all these things, right? But as you get the further upriver you go, the further and further apart the activity and the shanties and the partying is, the further you get away from the, 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 you know, the city. And at one point, it gets it becomes very dark and, and very like, you know, like I haven't seen anything for about ten minutes. You know what I mean? So you get the feeling like you know you're mostly alone here. Now, as you guys are going down the river, are you using any light sources? Or are you just relying on? There is partial moonlight. It's a partially cloudy night. So if you've got low light, you're okay. So is the guy driving the only guy that yeah. can't see in the dark. Oh my yeah, God. the only guy's driving. Really? I need all. Well, okay. Is there so, a okay, light I'm rethinking on the boat? this. So now I guess there's what, a light on the boat. So I guess what that means is once light. we get Rock. away from like the more civilized space where there would be lights more of, like maybe we can light. let him just pilot out of the dock and then we take yeah. over once like, we get right, into the dock. Good job, buddy. I can see. I can go in the actual world. You did such a good job. No, that get over there. <laughs> oh my god, I can't see it. That's all I'll say. No, you're right, Jelly. That's I really hilarious. should that be out funny. here with my shotgun. It would be better. And I'm going to look at the pilot seat. I'll be back one day. 
<laughs> you can sit there when the spirit's pulling it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going so fast, yeah. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you always wanted your boy to do. <laughs> Shit. Oh, man. <laughs> My secret. <laughs> what All right. Yeah. So, Mom always so pulled that no NASCAR. Alright, so now Nomad's dri- finally yeah. in the oh. Yeah, we, it, it got too dark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Once we were done with the, the soft drinks and the elves. Alright, so uh, everyone make me a perception we can, test. We can rent one of these next vacation. We're going we're passing the elves when we go back. What was the perception test? Perception. It was a perception test, yep. I'm not in my urban environment, so I cannot have my special And right. is it like. Intuit- <laughs> intuition? It's a skill. It's a skill. Perception, yes. intuition. Intuition. Right, you've got five? Yep. Damn. Jesus. Crazy. I don't think I've ever rolled five successes. I got one. That's about right. Oh, I get a... I, what do I get? Would a hearing help? Or plus is it one more perception. of like an eyeball oh, yeah. thing? Okay. It's, more of a, it's more of an eyeball thing. Ooh. Vision enhancement gives me plus one perception if it's audible or... I mean, if it's visual. So anyone that got three or more... I'm still waiting for oh. jelly to roll. Yes. Three... And I got a free edge, so I'll re-roll four. Okay. So, you know, I got three or more. You hear the hum of a motor up ahead, and as you start to look at the moonlight, you see that there's there are two, maybe other swamp buggies that are rolling under the cover of the darkness. They do not have any lights on, and they, they appear to be rolling in some type of stealth mode, maybe, and they're coming your direction. So you will you will pass them on the on the water. But you could you could see them. You saw the shapes moving under the moonlight reflection, and, and you could hear the low hum of a motor of some there's type. There's no reason to believe that they can't see and or hear us. That would be ridiculous to assume we're. So if you guys are, I don't believe you're. Uh, we're not using lights because he's driving. Now. So you're not using any lights, right? Neither but, are they, but right? We have but big are you going, using right? the swamp buggy motor, or are you using the trolling no, motor? We're, well, like we're still point, at the beginning of our. No, you're, you're, you've, no. You've, you've been on the water. I uh, feel for, like at this while. point, like once yeah, we, we don't get wanna... far in, we're gonna switch to the spirit. Okay, I thought you guys were gonna do the tro- the swamp buggy motor, then the trolling motor, mm-hmm. then the yes. spirit. Oh, so, we were gonna do that, yeah. Right, yeah. So right now you're using the trolling motor. Okay. Yeah. So okay. then they would probably. So you're a little bit hurt. more than a mile out, right? So I, you know, I don't hear that, so I can't tell you to cut the engine. But who we'll, heard it? We'll give them a chance to not get killed by us, and then if they cause yeah, a fudge, yeah, I heard it. So when I hear. Their engine, yeah. I'll just, I guess, I'll cut our engine. You're gonna cut. Yeah. All right. If you tell so, me that there's somebody nearby, you guys will hear like a really silent racking of a shotgun. Yeah, belt. I think it's appropriate. <laughs> Be prepared for trouble, mm-hmm. but maybe they're just on a So drive one of us. you roll a stealth roll for the group. You want me to do it or him? Yeah. Well, who's got better nominate. stealth? Oh yeah, I have, I have good stuff. Just to let you know, you're I was the stealth guy. You're going to be minus sure. two. Di- you're going to be minus two dice because of the signature of the boat, the big boat that you're in. So, does this count as sneaking? Uh, yes, it is. You're sneaking okay. with the boat. That's why you're minus two dice. We're sneaking with the boat. So, yep, you're sneaking put, with the boat. Put, put, put. So, yeah, I'd be rolling uh, five and eight. Oh, yeah. Go, go for it. Dice? Yeah. Jesus. Get in there, that's bud. Without, yeah, that's with the minus two. All right. uh, this, is all right. where, this is where Nomad excels. The, yeah, sneak, well, the sneaking guy, the covert ops The covert ops, ops guy is sneaky. Imagine. You could be covert ops in the mall for all I know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All Blart covert up. He's the hair straightener guy. I sneak into the Eddie Bauer all right. store all the time. So, Hell yeah, look at that. Seven. Okay, seven, all right. This is against my perception. Okay, not seven. No, I'm rolling <laughs> seven dice. Everybody be quiet. Get up, okay. killer. So, you see these two vessels coming, right? The river itself is about 40 yards across. You know, from what you can tell, they're probably about 10, 10 meters between and like, what's the profile of this boat? Is it, does it have like anything big on it, or can we kind of like, like lay low and fan. just kind of look like they a... look like low-profile boats or maybe other swamp buggies? Yeah, but they're it's not. They don't have you. a fan. Yeah, no, they've got a swamp. Well, you you didn't see in the. It's fairly dark. But you uh-huh. saw there's a vessel. And you saw it kind of go through the moonlight a little bit. Yeah. And you're like, there's okay. something coming up the river, and you can hear the low hum of the engine. So you cut yours. Yeah. And it actually gets a little bit further, right? I mean, so, you, can, you know, as you guys get closer, you can hear I, the motor. Uh, it is, a, it is a. Some I type do of have motor. vision magnification in my cyber eye, which goes up to fifty times. Okay. So I don't know if that with the thermos would help kind of figure out what what's going on over there. Go ahead and but, give me another perception roll. Cool. Yeah, we're in the nomad zone. Thermos should get you anybody that's standing up in the boat, potentially past the underside of the gun walls, the Woo. cold of the swamp. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> wow, dude. Look at that roll, dude. Two, four, six, seven successes on nine dice. Holy shit. Rich. Ah, all right. 
So your your cyber eye zooms right, and you you see the signatures. There are two boats. Each boat has three armed orcs in it. All right, so I'll, I'll sub They are they are hunkering down, and they are yeah. they are making hand signals between each other on the the, the, op, the opposing boats, and they're they're motioning down down the water. It looks like you get the sense that us, they know right? there's something up ahead, and that they're positioning to to maybe flank or or surround or get the get the drop on. But they're not motioning towards us. They're or motioning are they? down the river. Okay, right? so yeah, I'll kind of mention. I'll say uh, two boats, three orcs on each. Just kind of keep it quiet. If, they don't seem to have noticed this. If our journey is 10 so miles, vocally. how many miles have we gone? You've gone seven. So we could just... You're a little bit more than a mile out yeah. from Who where you were going to come. Who doesn't have sub-vocal? Nobody. You know, to talk? Oh, no, it was only, it was only Bert. Only, oh, great. So let's have a little he's conversation. He's the man anyway. He's, he's so so wait, 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 wait. So. You're, saying, you're, you're disconnecting two different things. All of us are on the cycled comm signal. Yeah. Sub vocal is something you purchase. Yeah. I do not have. You do not. Have I it. can receive, but I cannot speak. I think all three head. of us. Okay, so. I thought everybody had it. I'm gonna say we could gun it, and maybe out distance them. I say we lay low and see if we can just let them drift. And I am shaking my head back and forth. No. I'm gonna lay on the ground. Yeah. You get the sense that they know something is up ahead. Yeah. Seems like they're interested in something uh, else. I'll, I'll flick on my Google eyes. No, that, no, you, you. They're like up, something you we are can up see. ahead. You are the thing that's oh, up yes, ahead. They're or they're dead. not pointing yeah. directly thought, at yeah. our You're going boat. upriver. They're coming down. They don't river. know what we are. They're just they may not know what you are, are but they're signaling between each other like, oh. you know, they're motioning like it's something that is in the direction they're going. I'm like laying on the and ground. And we're in the direction they're going. Let me be clear. Like, you are in the direction they're going. I thought we were passing. No. No, you have not passed each other yet. You could assume that maybe they're thinking of something else and be like, well, I didn't know you were talking about us. If they look unfriendly, take them out. Can I flick on my googly eyes? And just see if there's a if they're astral. Okay. You don't see any astral signatures. Perfect. I just wait with my shotgun. Huh? Okay. Well, then in that case, I will retract my statement, and I do not say to lay low. If obviously, if it seems like they're aware of us, I mean, they're, so they're so they're motioning of... towards upriver. They're not necessarily so, motioning towards us. So again, they are communicating yeah. so say, quietly between yeah. the two boats with each other. And right. they're making well, hand gestures towards something that is in the direction that they're going. Okay. That well, let's, is us. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's wait and see. I, I still say we should wait and see here, yeah. but be at the ready. Again, yeah. the boats are to, 10 meters you know. spaced apart, right? And, you know, your your river width is about 40 yards. Is there a way to maneuver that we aren't flanked? Meters or yards. Like, could we you s- could pull to one side of the river or the other, you know, so that you're not caught maybe in the middle. If they break to each bank and try and surround you you won't be caught in the middle so i'll ask you I th- yeah i thought we were on one side already I, because nope. that's normally how no, you no. travel up the river is on the right hand side of the river but that's just <laughs> nobody's gonna say which that. side they're yeah, on. so no. i mean you can decide which side you're on you yeah. can decide where you're at okay. so dave i'm gonna ask in because you mix measurements so wow. is it, what you said originally it's 20 meter wide are we at a 20 meter 40 wide, meters 40, 20 meter wide. I said 40 yards 40 wide. meters 40 meters 40 yards <laughs> same distance right okay. for width of the river 40 yards all right. Or 40 meters. Okay. The boats on the water are 10 meters apart from each other. There's from a 10 other. meter space in between the two boats. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, and do we know if orcs have low light vision? We, I mean, that's common knowledge. You absolutely know that orcs have yeah. low light vision. They see in the so, dark. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, can we get to one side so they can't flank us? Not with that. I don't have sub vocal. You mean you could shake your head? You guys can talk quietly, maybe. Yeah, I mean, are you are you are you going? Oh no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say a word. But again, it's not. We're on the water, which carries, but it's still. There's a lot of ambient noise. There is, and their engines are on. Or they've got a low hum motor that is that is moving them up the river faster than what a trolling motor probably. I'll say, well, if you all if you all want, I could always just light a fire under their asses and make them jump off. Let's wait and see if they're actually... Yeah, I say we wait and see, because I thought the stealth roll was kind of like piloting the boat slash stealth, too. So, like, we kind of, like, curve off and just... The stealth roll you know. is what is needed for them to see if... To find out whether they see you or how clearly yeah. they may see you. They so may we, not see you. Right. They may hear something. They may not see anything yet. I'm thinking we made a pretty strong stealth roll, so we wait, but we're ready in case they see us, you know, then... Okay, in, yeah. Instead of, like, suddenly trying to reposition for battle. Yeah, I hear you. You know. Okay, yeah, so we'll just continue, and if they look unfriendly, take them out. So, 
where you want to be positioned on the river on the right right side as you know close oh. to the right side without being you know getting into the five meters from shore ten meters from shore well depending on the depth of the river at this point i mean if it's deep then yeah like five you know five to ten meters five ten yards from shore seven yeah. yards so, yeah. right. so same oh trying to stay in the same now, let's, thing. let's use meters meters is the yeah. increment that they use in shadow room so we use meters all right. all right so you got 40 meters across the width of the boat is uh, yeah if we ain't gonna get caught up in half, half, about you know? five meters yeah so you've got you know two boats meters. that are three meters meter, meter, plus meter. 10 meters in between them so you're talking about and the spirit's meters. not doing anything right now yeah. spirit has not been spirit called has not been called in the, in the, in the so i say we just drift along and just kind of wait and see if drift they, along and black out and see if yeah, they float just by kind of stay low and okay. so again as you guys get closer right go ahead and give me another stealth roll they are uh, going to oh, no, you guys are going to pass each other see how quiet you are as they go by all right, six. six all right cool so they come up and so anyone can see in the dark you see these these orcs they're hunkered down low in their swamp buggies and they're scanning they're looking back and forth right and you know, you guys, for some reason, they float right past you. Oh, God. Bitchin'. Oh, oh, oh. Don't we're seem just, to take. We're just driftwood. Well, they, they look right just at you, but for some reason, they didn't, you know, you're either, you know, who cares? Just another, you know, boat or, you know, who are those idiots on the water or whatever? You know, it's not, apparently, not what they're looking for. Did you guys see those idiots hiding? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see nobody. No, no sir. So they, they, okay. they, they have quietly floated by, you know. They've got a, and you hear the low hum of a, they're moving faster than a normal trolling motor would take them, so they've got some kind of really low noise, you know. You know, maybe they're frog yeah. hunting, you know. Plus, we don't want to really tip them off getting into any fights this close. Absolutely. Even though it's three miles out, you never know. All right, steady on. All right, so you get about a mile out. And so at a mile out, my understanding is that you're going to switch over to spirit pro uh, propulsion. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're going to call the spirit into, into service, and you're going to tell it what? Uh, spirit. You give it simple yeah. commands. <laughs> Come here, boy. Uh, so I'll There's go one, one command. Yeah. It shows up. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, okay. Li okay. Listen up. Fuck. Listen. That's two. That's two. <laughs> <laughs> two left. <laughs> I've got to be very specific, so I need you to listen clearly. That's three. three. <laughs> <laughs> Sweat. <laughs> so it's I'm gonna say, it's all yeah. damn it. <laughs> it's like fucking middle finger. <laughs> Fuck it, mage. <coughs> um, okay, so yeah. I figured I would know the best way to word it, but basically I'm gonna say I need you to propel us. I need you to push our craft until I tell you to stop. You Actually, think? yeah, that's yeah. Push, push, push the boat. Push this boat forward. And wait, can I say? Will it? Would saying to it like. I want to be able to tell it to slow down or speed well, That up. would be another it command. So you would be command. another command. So okay. you just say push the boat until I say stop would be one okay. command. Yeah. And then those to push the boat. Right? Yeah. Then I guess that's it, yeah. So push the boat at, and I'll ask Nomad what a reasonable, whether five, ten miles right. an hour. Like, so know. it starts pushing the boat. Yeah. Right? All right. So it starts pushing the boat down the river. It's a lot slower, you know, yeah. but it's pushing the boat. All I right? can speed it up if you guys want, but. So I, I am going to ready my weapon. What I'm doing as well. You're going to ready your weapon. All right. Eventually, you're going to see up ahead. You're going to come around this bend. And you're going to look up about 60 meters, and you're going to see there are two lights kind of stationary. Well, maybe about 10 feet off the ground. They're just two very, you know, you, probably easy to, to miss if you weren't looking for them. You see, look at those are lights right there. You see two lights. And then as you look, you see another light here and then another light here. Mm -hmm. so they're three and one third meters off the river mm -hmm. and so do we see those do we if we look what i'm looking for at this point because he said it's there is the walkway all right so go and give me a perception test and anyone else that's yeah. specifically scrutinizing go and give me a uh, perception test two three okay. three all right so for those of you that got two successes you don't see a dock but you see you see a stationary swamp buggy and for those of you that got three you see the the, the wooden planks kind of sticking up out of the water that that end in something flat, and that's where we stop. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, oh boy. God, this is gonna be a shit joke. <laughs> no, it's gonna be so good. No, no, shit joke. So I, had, I had understood. The music. Thank you for joining us on another NCRP Productions podcast. We couldn't do this without you, so please like and subscribe everywhere we're found, including YouTube. Facebook, Anchor, Google, Apple, Spotify, and other great podcast sites. 
If you'd like to help us continue making more content, we'd love to have your support on our Patreon. And if you have any feedback for us, please feel free to comment on our podcasts or email us directly at ncrpproductions at gmail.com. That's N-C-R-P-P-R-O-D-U-C-T-I-O-N-S at gmail.com. And we'd like to give a special shout out to our current patrons, MD Parker 4, Chef Francis, Crowman76, Loading Mad Cat, M. Coling, November Stevenson, Baron Iconu, and Rosix13. Thank you all. We truly, truly appreciate it.